Welcome back. Well, thanks for liking and subscribing because you've obviously like liked and subscribed and you're uh, going to follow all the videos. And uh, if you haven't, um, I think you're better. Otherwise, the puppy's going to get it. Right. What we're going to cover today on today's video, we're going to do a little bit of the first part of the project. And the first part of the project was the drive line. And the drive line is very unique in this car. And we had to, or I had to like invest in, you know, quite a lot of money and a lot of like specialized companies and stuff like that to allow the production of the um, parts for this sort of drive line because it's a little bit of an unconventional layout. So because we've got the engine in the middle of the car and then the seats are very narrow um, around the um, cockpit, we call it a cockpit for obvious reasons. Um, and then, um, you know, like inside the car, there's very little space as well. And because we wanted to maintain the car's four drive system, you know, we had to go down this road of like getting a specialized transmission made. So um, with that, we, we had it designed and built and we also want to maybe do some different stuff with this um, car as well. So we wanted to have the option to change the gear ratios fairly easy as well. So, um, which we can do with this car. Um, we've got a set of drop gears in the front of the gearbox, which allows the um, ratio to be changed. So um, that's quite a good thing as well. So, but yeah, let's um, go through and we'll take a look at all the parts and show you what we're using for the uh, bits and pieces. Right, well, here we are. This is where I'm going to be sitting. Okay, so this is totally different to the original Quattro. So engine at the back. This is going to be the transmission system that we're using for the vehicle. Um, and then we've got diffs, drive shafts, hubs, etc. So yeah, it's quite a different layout that we sit have to use. So we can't actually have the engine directly onto the gearbox um, purely for space. So if you put uh, my big ass down next to this and then um, try to have a co-driver, you just won't, won't be able to fit it into the car. Like the, the car gets too small too quick. Okay, so that's kind of why we have to have this drive shaft extension. And then this gets joined to the front diff um, just there. And then um, that's it really. And so um, that gear lever we've had designed, um, that's going to basically join straight onto the transmission system just here. And then it'll operate via the lever here. And then it'll be a nice mechanical connection. None of this PlayStation, PlayStation flappy paddles all these kids use these days. Um, we're just gonna have a stick with a, a gear shift load cell in it. Okay, so it's full sequential and stuff like that. So um, this will be where my feet are for the pedal box. And then obviously we'll be able to, you know, adjust the height or the, the setting for the pedal box with the, the old Alcon pedal box, etc. as well. So yeah, I just need to have the rest of the car really. So, so this is the gearbox we're gonna be using. Um, six speed sequential uh, dog box. And basically it's got a quite a different unique layout. So because the engine's in the back, input shaft is here on the, um, this side. Um, this is where the vehicle center diff is actually in here. And the center diff, you could actually have a lot of different settings in it. So you've got preload and then you've got ramp angles. And one of the things that I asked to have um, for these vehicles, if we ever like use the old ha handbrake, like um, Travis Pastrana or, you know, Mad Mike. Um, so we've had a special diff made with different ramp angles in here so that we could, this will allow us to do um, handbrake turns if we have to, so, or if we can. And then, so the, the diff, front diff joins directly onto here. And then we've had a special custom transfer box that allows the rear differential to drive the correct way. Because when we first sat down with this, it was like, right, the engine's got to turn this way. The wheels are going to turn this way. We've got to have six gears, da, da, da. So it was all like in here, in here, this way, this way, da, da, da. da. And I could see the guy's like mind melting, you know? So he sort of sat down drew out the architecture of this gearbox, how it had to be. And, and 
then we come up to this sort of design and this was basically like this allowed the drive to be the correct way for having the differential in the back. Right, so this is essentially the passenger side of the vehicle. So along this side of the vehicle, this is, has the main prop shaft that runs to the rear differential of the car as well. So that's kind of why there's a center bearing and so forth in the um, center of the prop shaft. And like in the car, it's so compact and tight, we've had to make like a specialized um, tunnel around the prop shaft for safety reasons, just in case something breaks. And then um, that center bearing is there because you can't have a prop shaft too long. Otherwise it becomes too, it gets a bit of a whip in it and it needs to be big to make the strength to hold the power and the torque of the engine and combo really. So that's kind of why we've had to have that sort of prop shaft in the vehicle. So, um, and then, yeah, that's running the same differential in the back of the car as the front of the car. But unlike the back, the front, we've just actually turned upside down the differential and that allows it to turn the correct direction. Okay, and so both differentials have got a seven and a half inch crown wheel pinion, um, and they've both got like plated LSDs and stuff in it. So um, both diffs have got different settings. Okay, so the back one's really tight, so we get a lot of drive, and then the front one's a little bit um, looser, so that we allows like an easy turning of the vehicle. So we can sort of make it change directions with the front and stuff like that. So this is the power plant for the actual car. Um, we've had to have a special designed um, bell housing and output shaft for their gearbox and drive sort of system. Um, that's all been machined out of billet. Um, yeah, everything's made out of billet nowadays, isn't it? So this is the TTRS engine, like the 07K it's referred to as. So it's a 2.5 litre. Um, slightly higher compression, it's got rods, pistons, all the max power stuff that you should have in a race car. Um, we've had our own dry sub system on this style of engine for quite a while, which is quite good because when we had to turn it round, we didn't have to change anything with the oil pickup system. So because it's essentially backwards in the vehicle, we just move the oil pickups to the back side of the engine, which is now these two sides, okay? Whereas before we had them in like these two sides because it was, this is the way it was accelerating. It was going that way, now it's going that way. Okay, so yeah, 2.5 litre and we sort of make up quite a lot of parts. We've had to, because it's so compact and so forth at the front of the engine, we've actually had to remove a lot of the drive belt system and ancillaries for the um, unit. And because we don't need the power steering, the steering's now up that end, we've, we sort of don't need the power steering pump at the, um, at the engine side of things now. So um, we've simplified it. Literally all we've got on the engine now is a electronic side of things is like the alternator. And then we have a electronic water pump, which is at the front of the vehicle. And then we just have a simple inlet for the um, water system just over there. So hopefully this should make big numbers. Um, we've got like a couple of different turbo combinations for it. So we've got a little turbo um, coming and then we've got a big turbo for the internet, making big power to keep the internet happy. And um, yeah, should make it fun really. The traditional car had this sort of style of suspension system. And when we looked at design in the front suspension, rear suspension, hubs, bearings, this, that, the choice was pretty clear and obvious that using the Audi R8 parts was perfect for this project because we could buy all the parts from your local Audi dealer, aftermarket um, places as well. And also, all the hubs are already pre-drilled for all the wheels that we've got lying around. Um, and it just keeps it very simple, you know, because when you want to design suspension parts and hubs and other stuff like that, it's actually a massive task and it's very expensive. So, whereas we could sort of go down to our local um, Audi dealer and you could buy these suspension arms for 
couple of hundred quid. Whereas if it was a motorsport part, you'd be looking into the thousands, you know, so for us, it's a no blank brainer. And we could also use um, all the factory ABS sensors for the vehicle as well. And we've actually converted these to suit a early style large drive shaft as well. So we could then get a drive shaft that's um, then going to be custom made lengthwise um, to suit it. And it's going to be nice and strong for the application really. So. Building a Group S car is not the easiest thing in the world. So that's probably why it hasn't been done before. And when I originally set out to design and build the car, we had to work out what driveline layout we needed to use. So that's why we've got this like whiteboard sketch. And that, that was probably drawn about four or five years ago. So yeah, this kind of shows the layout of where the engine's gonna be the clamshell design, all the bits and pieces. So yeah, looking on the uh, whiteboard, I also noticed that the word grumpy was on there. What's, uh, what's that about? Yeah, well, <laughs> we like to name our cars. You know, this one's Walter, this one's Ray. And uh, deciding the name for a car is quite, well, it's challenging, isn't it? But it's sort of come to us over a few um, drinks, have you say, and uh, the original car was designed by Roland Gumpet and they called their car Project Gumpy. And then that's how it just come to us. It's like, well, this is gonna be angry, let's call it Grumpy. And so, to be honest, the name sort of sticks really. So yeah, moving forward, that's what we call it. So I noticed the black book on the uh, workbench as well in the workshop, what, what's that for? Well, to be honest, that's a bit of a Bible for this project and uh, for these cars really because anything I do it just gets written down you know so I just try to keep a track of part numbers of parts where I bought them from don't normally put in how much stuff costs just in case it gets into the wrong hands if you know what I mean from the missus and uh, yeah we just sort of use it for all sorts of things really from measuring piston ring gaps to bearing clearances um, the length of the prop shaft, all sorts of stuff really. So yeah, I sort of try not to go anywhere without it really. And it comes in handy. Right guys, welcome back. Uh, this is my Group S 2000 horsepower Audi. It's much better than Dave's. <laughs> and uh, yeah, make sure you like and subscribe. Oh mate, you're not Dave. Get out of way from my car. Was it, oh, come, man, come on, come on. Sorry, I'm in me or not. Bit of a mix up there, sorry about that. This is actually my car, and so is this one. So is the one in the back. Living life large. 